Hello guys and welcome back to the channel where you've just seen some footage from the Hike Micro Trail M15 camera. That's the camera that Lena at Hike Micro very kindly loaned to me so I can keep an eye on that feeder whilst I'm off of my feet following the hip operation which is in four days time. So two days time Keith and I are going back for one last shoot at the Oxford Gun Company in our luxurious hide complete with a welcome mat and a door knocker but this time no fancy FX air guns, this time we're both using BSA sub 12 foot pound rifles. This is the one I should be using, this was a BSA Ultra JSR. The JSR is the first sort of gun a youngster would use of the PCP flavour. They come with a smaller size stock. I'll put an image of this next to the standard JSR and you can see the difference. This one I bought it about seven years ago for Munch when he was eight or nine and I took this up to Solihull where I met the legendary John Boquette who was the designer of the R10 for BSA and also lots of other guns. John very kindly did a blueprint tune on this and also has converted it to a left hand drive for me and Munch. Uh, this now produces 11.6 foot pounds shooting Bisley Magnums and it is absolutely laser accurate. Keith went and zeroed this for me because I put the, the scope on it the other day and I've not shot it. You're going to look at that and think that's miles too far forward. Well it is, that's absolutely rubbish there. The reason for that is I should be using the One Leaf Commander NV100 which will go straight on the back of that. Now you saw that there's no fancy attachments, there's no bayonet fittings like you would normally get to put one of those add-on scopes onto the back. This is a standard Hawk 3 to 9 by 40 AO scope and that one leaf commander just slots straight on the back of it. They're about 200 pounds. I did do a review a couple of years ago and there was a 10% discount code on that. I think if you use Predator Protection UK all capital letters Go on the One Leaf site, find that, put that code in there, you'll get yourself 10% off. It's a brilliant piece of kit if you want to go out and do a bit of filming. HD colour, daytime, got its own illuminator for black and white at night. It's a good, cheap way of making shooting videos. I started the same way. So there we go, that's the kit I'm going to be using. Sub 12 foot pound BSA from the factory. Alright, it's been tuned, it's got the John Boquet logo on there but they are good out of the box, I promise you. This one is just a little bit better. Um, John's done a few little tweaks to it to put it back to his original specification. So there we go, that's what I'm going to be using. The legendary Keith Mahoney is also going to be using a BSA, but I shall now hand over to Keith so he can introduce himself and the gun that he will be shooting on Sunday. So I look forward to seeing you all there. This will be my last shoot before I go into hospital in four days time. Thank you all for your support and <laughs> some funny messages. Uh, I think I've got a few offers to go in a three-legged race when I come out of hospital, so I might be taking you up on that. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday in the Hyde. Catch you later on. Bye for now. Hi, Des has asked me if I do a small review on the gun I'm gonna use on an squirrel shoot over at the Oxford Gun Company. So here we are, this is my BSA R10 in 2.2 topped off with a Wolf 4K scope on top. Um, it, I've had this gun now for about 10 months. It was never really my favourite gun, I just couldn't gel with it really. Um, then it had issues, it went back to BSA and fitted a new regulator for me, which was okay, but I treated it to a trip to Ratworks, who stripped it down, polished it, replaced the reg again, and it's come back as a completely different gun. It's just so much smoother, everything about it is better the cocking action, the trigger, and it's just generally smoother. I fitted the Huma barrel shroud on it, mainly because I think it looks better, and it does sound slightly different to a, a standard R10. And it's very accurate as well, it's a, it's a really good gun, but we'll find out how accurate um, when you see the next video after you've been over at the Oxford Gun Club. You're going to miss this. Oh yeah, definitely. But it's nice the fact that folks are sending in what footage. I spoke actually spoke to Ken this morning in Australia, phoned him up and spoke to him. He sent me some nice video clips of building his hide. How he's built. So it was like five o'clock in the evening there, and he said, I'm just going in to have some tea and I'm going to go shooting. Just as I got here, he sent me a video through on WhatsApp 
with a dead fox. He said, bugger, I've got the press record. <laughs> <laughs> so I've lost count of how many times I've done that. It's just a quick view here from some Epexel electronic binoculars, but more of that a bit later on in the video. Over to you, mate. Straight in front. Right. Another one coming. Stand by. Left hand side. I like the sun show on. Yeah. Washed in as well. That just proves it. Front of the head, they just drop. Side of the head, that's uh, That's two within less than a minute, isn't it? Mm. It's like That's lucky, just moved. Right next to his brother. Is he going to go for the nuts? It's so tempting to take a shot just as they're twitching, but it's not worth it really, is it? Out of sight now, I can't see him. No, going the tree. He's got a leaf right in the way. Two rushing in from the left hand side. I've got one in the corner on the floor coming up to the first one. Just wait to see what happens, Keith. We'll get them on, yeah. get them on the feed. So he's down, and the other one I can see out in the background. Sat down just underneath, underneath the diagonal. And that second one's coming in the background. Mm -hmm. So he is 31 yards away at the moment, the furthest one. The closest one is 25. The furthest one away is out of shot now. Oh, he is coming up. We might have to do a, a double on this. If you get the one on the feeder, right. 
left hand one's busy feeding off a floor, right hand one's stuff at the bottom of the tree. Okay, it's going up. This one up north. Uh, he's going up skywards. He's going across now. So he's right, he's right at the top of the tree canopy, eating the nut that he's just nicked. And the other one's on the floor. Oh, I don't know where the other one's gone. That's a dead one I'm looking at. Oh, the one's still down there on the left. Mate, his boys right at the top of the tree. I've seen it on the camera. They they tend to sit up. There's a little fork halfway up, about six foot up. They tend to sit in there. Right, he's on the diagonal. Going to make his way up to you. Right, the other one's coming down the tree. He's probably ten foot up from the feeder. The one's on the floor going to the base of the tree, going up the diagonal. Right, so we got that one on the feeder. Right, do you want to take care of that? We've got a deer coming in in the background. You want to record? Right, you take care of that, and I'll watch the one. Hang on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You might better get that one coming down as well. Right, I'm on the one on the top of the tree. One on the tree, one on the floor. I can't see the one. Yeah, hang on. Right, the one on the ground is a bit twitchy. I do the one on the ground. You get you stay on that one on the on the box. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Right. This one's he's oh, he's got me on the leaves again. No, hold on. Right, that one's dead. Get yours. What did I say to you about make sure you record stuff? <laughs> what a knob. Right at the top of that tree. Just just see the corner of his head. You see it through the thermal quite clearly, but all I could just see was just a little bit of grey and when it moved yeah. I, I could see, you know, it was the side of his head, sort of between his eye and his ear. And that was that was Not threading sure. a that was threading a needle. But yeah, whacked him and then just watched him tumble down through those branches. Mm. Of course, none of it was on film. Old age. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Pleased with that. More pleased than he was. Well, six down. What time is it now? Quarter to one. So that was half past well, about quarter to a quarter to eleven. We started anyway, so a couple of hours. Yeah. It's not been too bad. Not bad at all. No. Um, I don't think there's anything else wandering around, so we might as well pack up. So we've actually been getting footage from Ken in Australia while we've been sat here with foxes that he's been shooting, so it's been quite interesting actually speaking to someone on the other side of the world while we're sat in our little squirrel hide. So well done for you, Ken. Some good, good film you've just sent me. Thanks very much. And thanks for... Robin for getting in contact earlier. That was nice to speak to you again. Um, we'll we'll uh, 
I'll give you a ring next week when I'm a, a half bionic man. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I just want to see you run in circles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Running, yeah, that's a long way off, I think. We've got to learn to walk again first. Right, should we go and pick up our six? Remember, we've got to cut the tails off because there's a man wants them for fishing flies. Well, it wasn't a bad, bad morning, really, was it? Right, there's one over here. That one that came down, the one that we didn't record. I'll go and find that. That's the, the best sign, so you know, if you haven't got a trail camera, they leave so much mess on the floor. It's, you know, it's, they can't, can't, um, they can't hide, can they? I want to take the tails off, yeah, because the man from the fishing fly company wants those. Doing that now, yeah. Hey? Yeah, that now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a knife in the in the back of the truck. Right, we've finished the last squirrel shoot. We've just picked up the, the six squirrels that we got this morning. Um, that'll be it for a while now, I guess. Um, we've done a few shoots in here with springers, we've done the FXs, just done one with the BSAs. And we've I think it's 59 we've got in here. It's not bad for a small wood. So yeah. Pity we didn't get to the 60, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But um, it's been interesting. Um, so we've had that feeder here. I think January the 6th was our first shoot. We built it just before Christmas, mm. didn't we? And I went away. Mm. Um, so I think January the 6th was the first shoot. So we've done it, like you say, PCPs, spring guns, your HW97, my TX200. Both done it with FXs. Yep done it today with BSA sub 12 foot pound guns. We've done it with Field Sports Britain using the FXs. Um, today was interesting. I've got a, they're, I'm going to call them cheap. They are cheap. They're a cheap pair of electrical binoculars. Um, they've got uh, HD 4K colour day mode and they go into night vision mode with its own infrared light source. Now, being honest, I find them difficult to use because I have to wear glasses because you're actually looking at the size of a, a mobile phone and they're out of focus for me. So a pair of glasses and the other thing is, it says on there it's got image stabilisation. Well, I find it hard, it makes, it makes me feel a bit giddy. But that's been today on a, on a little tripod in here and hopefully I've got some footage in 4K. So I'll say there, they're about $90. It's from a company called Apexel. I will put a link on this description. If you, if you want something to do what Keith and I have done today, just film like an over, overview film of something, or you want to look down the bottom of your garden in the, in the dark, it's absolutely ideal for that. A youngster that doesn't need a pair of glasses on to read as well, it's absolutely a piece of cake. This is all right, so it's got blood all over it. How did that happen? But there we go. But uh, no, it's been good fun. So I'm now handing over the remote control to Keith. <laughs> it's all going to get messy now. Isn't it? <laughs> Keith is going to have the remote control. Um, he's going to take care of all of my camera equipment whilst I'm out of action. Um, hopefully that won't be for too long. But the plan is now we're going to move that, or you're going to move that, over at the back of the, the farmhouse where I've shot dozens and dozens of squirrels. But it's now middle of August, so there's natural food about, it's hazelnuts about, conkers are coming out, uh, there's sweet chestnuts are out, acorns obviously. There's lots of natural food around that these fellas are going to be picking on. So I think sort of October, November time, about when people are wearing poppies, that'll probably be the time to put that feeder back up in the, in the farmhouse garden. Right, so there's the remote. Thank you very You've much. I press the blue one and say goodbye nicely. Goodbye nicely. <laughs>
If you have, please click on that subscribe. Hit the notification bell. There's some videos coming out whilst I'm in hospital. See you soon. And thanks everybody for your support. Cheerio.